little B-roll. Uh, did I put that in slow-mo? I don't think so. Take two. Here became clear that my DSLR was getting in the way of making the images that I wanted. Looking on the back of the camera, I knew immediately that it was not the way in which I had seen the image and that once I brought it into Lightroom, it was going to take a fair amount of massaging and manipulating in order to bring it to what I had seen with my eye, even in the most neutral of circumstances. On a recent trip to Italy, I decided I was not going to take my DSLR at all. I just packed my Fujifilm X-T100S and I said, you know what, we're just going to have to make pictures with that and make do. It was the most fun I had had on a trip with a camera in recent memory. From the Colosseum to the Amalfi Coast to the Vatican, I was just taking picture after picture after picture that I absolutely loved. The color that came out of it, the film simulations, the saturation, these looked exactly like I had imagined. And so after my trip, I decided I was going to go with the Fuji system of cameras and settled on the X-T3. The only question then was, could this camera produce the portraits that my clients had come to expect? So with the assistance of Katie and Jesse, I went to the town of Locke and tested whether this indeed was going to be my new camera. The town is really quiet this time of day. There's not a lot of people walking around. But apparently I'm still in the middle of the street because people are still trying to pass by. But yeah, it's a really cool little town uh, with all sorts of like little artifacts and little pretty places to see. Most importantly, the town was kind of settled by an Asian uh, community that came here during the war, and there's still a lot of that influence in and around the town, which makes it super, super cool. Check it out. So on this first time out with the camera, I decided to shoot natural light, and we got a perfect overcast day with no hard shadows to fight. I think it should be pretty. We're gonna make use of not only the staircase, but also this nice little archway. Trust me when I say it looks nicer on the other side. And then all I had to worry about was the composition and the placement because I could look through the EVF and know that my lighting and exposure were bang on. In fact, in these first set of images, this is full program mode, which I never used to do with my Canon. But I just wanted to see what this camera can do and how it judged lighting conditions and exposure and aperture and speed. And now that I had a baseline, I could really push this camera and see what it could do. In addition, I had gotten the update from DJI for the Osmo Pocket. And as you can see in this footage of Jesse, the colors, the new log profile, as well as the ability to use the ND filters, which finally came out, really added to the overall look and feel of my work. In this image here of Jessie, I had her sit on the edge of the tub, and then I used the light that's coming from behind her in order to create kind of a halo effect. Then I had her turn into that light, and that's how we created this image. Using nothing but the ambient light, as well as the diffused sunlight coming forward, you can see from her nose we create just a little bit of that kind of Rembrandt light. And I just love, love, love this picture. I shot Katie in the same location about a month and a half earlier. However, it's much later in the day. In fact, it's almost right before sunset. And so as the lamps in the alley, as well as some of the street lights started to turn on, I used those as hair lights and accent lights to not only separate Katie from the background, but also to add some visual interest. And it really gives it a warm glow, even though we're pretty much in the dead of winter at this point. Okay, one last picture in this alley. And in this picture of Jesse, 
you'll notice that it really looks as though it's been front lit with either a reflector or a flash, but that's not the case at all. Instead, as you can see, there's a lot of light behind Jesse. So before I took the photograph, I really brought the exposure up behind her. As you can see, it's really, really bright behind her. And because of that, the ambient light now to the sides and the front, they glow because I've increased their value. And that's what gives the picture the look of being lit. There's nothing better on a shoot than having a subject that's just good natured and just fun to be around. And I'm blessed to work with a lot of models who are just that down to earth and just so easy to work with. That then makes my job as the photographer more of a facilitator. I have to make sure that I give instruction and encouragement so then that way we're both on the same page as to what we're trying to create. You know, as you can see, the light is going down very quickly here. We don't want to waste any frames. Beautiful. And once again, because Beautiful. of the EVF and because of the size of the Fuji, I can keep my attention towards the model and engaged rather than having to chimp and then look up, chimp, look up over and over and over again. Beautiful, stay just like that for a second. Good, put a little bit more light in your face, turn towards the sky more. Perfect. Good, chin down just a little bit. Gorgeous. Good, turn even more to us. Safely though, safely. Beautiful. And I believe that this kind of pacing and tone and affirmation, it puts the model at ease and allows the images to have more of a realistic or sincere feel, which is what I'm really trying to capture. And with that, we were done in the town of Locke. However, as I started seeing the sky turn almost ominous, I really want to use that as a backdrop. So I convinced Jesse to travel down the road with me to this location where we could use the sky as our backdrop and create a moody type of image reminiscent of Joe McNally in his book, The Moment It Clicks. By using a white balance that's more tungsten in color value, I then used a Godox 8200 with a CTO gel on it to warm Jesse's skin. And there you have it. In the background, you can see the forest that we used for this next image that had been ravaged by a wildfire. However, there's a certain beauty even to this. As you can see, the grass starting to come back and the forest starting to restore itself. And I thought it would make an interesting backdrop. The last scene of the day is an implied portrait. And many times photographers will ask me, how do you get the women to make these pictures with you? And the answer is always the same. I don't make the models do anything. By creating a foundation of trust and by them knowing that our goal is to create an empowering image that shows them as strong and capable and almost goddess-like, it removes the apprehension and allows us to create. If you liked today's video, please make sure you hit that like button and subscribe with notifications so you don't miss future episodes. Lastly, make sure you share this video with friends because sharing is caring.